Alrighty, hello every folks, and good morning, welcome to another edition of Know Your Unit, aka Know Your Fried Chicken, a bit more literally this time. So today we are talking about the cats of the sky, uh, the griffin. Um, so, okay, what's the deal with this unit? Because oftentimes you'll see them getting written off as being defensively non-existent, uh, and or a unit that uh, relies on uh, just ambushes, um, or potentially uh, somebody that requires uh, uh, requires a bit of uh, extra maintenance to actually make function. Um, and I'm here to try and set the record straight on these amazing flappy birds, um, because frankly they're one of my favorites in this thing. Now let's go ahead and, uh, and get started here. First and foremost, let's take a look at these stats. They're a little bit deceptive. Uh, while they have basically nothing going on defensively outside of resistance, um, you'll also notice that their avoidance isn't terribly high, um, and that their agility, despite being their highest stat, is actually not that great at times. Uh, it's actually not enough to uh, get them to land a uh, hit on hyper-evasive units. So, the thing is, they are. what you have to understand about these guys is that they are, in all things, a strike, uh, a strike fighter, basically. Um, they, they have the ability to do bombing runs, they have the ability to, uh, to absolutely shut units down with no mercy, and they're one of the fastest things that you can get. Um, so, uh, so the thing is, though, you have to understand that they are something that wants to operate in packs. Uh, oftentimes, the uh, couple of mistakes I'll see folks making or that they'll try to operate a single griffin by itself, which is fine, but not terribly impressive. Uh, like, if they can get the jump on somebody, they'll usually be able to outspeed them, stun them, steal their health, all of that kind of thing, and that's fine, but uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's not exactly a ideal matchup um, against a lot of things in the game. Um, however, however, uh, when they travel in packs, they are oppressively powerful. And additionally, if you happen to have any unit that can empower them, that ends up going and getting completely taken up to 11. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that these guys are functionally pack hunters, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, so next thing you need to know is that there's actually three different variants of griffins in this game. Uh, we've got uh, the uh, the standard variant here, which I've got two of, uh, that are going to have their skill loadout, and then we've got uh, two quote-unquote upgraded versions uh, that uh, Mr. Gamp is going to bring to the party uh, in the form of Obda and Berta. So, effectively, uh, what these are are going to be special versions uh, that happen to have unique skills on them. Uh, in the case of Obda, they've got uh, Holy War, Sacred, uh, Sacred Breath, and Steel Stance um, coming in uh, trained up with with, uh, demonology and augment light. Uh, their power is largely going to be coming from this uh, augment light here, though switching in to give them anatomy is definitely a good idea. Please bear in mind that uh, I have these guys just sort of slapped together at the moment. I'm not, I didn't even bother trying to optimize them because it's simply not necessary. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I just left these guys kind of as they were. In the case of Berta, uh, we have the more offensive variants uh, with Delirium Haze, Toxic Breath, uh, and as well as Berserk, uh, coming in with Instill Shadow as well as Augment Darkness. Uh, they are the uh, the two exceptions uh, to the uh, to the kind of elements on these guys, uh, with the standard ones all having exclusively uh, uh, Augment Air uh, that's available to them. All right, now that said, let's talk about the skills on the standard variant. Uh, so we're going to have uh, Hurricane, Bloodbath, Sparagmos, and Talon Dive. Uh, so Talon Dive is going to be their kind of bread and butter, kill something and make it die move. It does have a stun effect on there uh, to uh, to slow something down, uh, potentially cause them to waste a turn. Uh, but understand that this is like essentially high efficiency, high murder rate <laughs> kind of a move here. Um, it's going to be one of the strongest things that they can do uh, to a single target. Um, and also, one of its kind of uh, quiet benefits is not only does it prevent future counterattacks, but it also uh, uh, goes and avoids a current counterattack. Um, managing TP and health is very important on these guys because, again, they are effectively a strike fighter here. They want to get in and they want to get out as quickly as possible. Um, so I mentioned earlier uh, that uh, there were two mistakes that I oftentimes see people make with them. The second one is over-reliance on something like Feral Remedy. Because the thing is, they will take damage and they'll take a lot of it. Oftentimes they'll end up barely surviving by the skin of their teeth. Um, and we have to understand is that flying back every time to get a, a full heal and stuff like that is just simply going to waste one of their best functions, which is their speed. Uh, their ability to quickly overwhelm stuff is what makes them so damn good. Um, so in those uh, situations, that's actually why you have something like Bloodbath. Uh, this is their kind of recovery in the field move. Uh, again, costing only uh, 25 uh, TP, uh, just like... Uh, I just like uh, Sprogmos there, it's only 25 recovery time. Um, a lot of their skills are fairly low in recovery time, fairly cheap, uh, with exception of Hurricane. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, but effectively, this allows them to find a weakened target or something with lower defense and just simply heal themselves on the fly to just barely survive. Barely surviving is normal on these guys. Don't try to keep them topped off at all times. Again, it's kind of missing the point. 
Um, and then lastly, or not lastly, but second to lastly, we've got Sparagmos. Uh, this is in those situations where they get surrounded and they just want to spread around some damage before running away. Uh, effectively being a small kind of localized tornado that can hit up to five targets at once. Um, and again, it's very useful for just suddenly distracting healers and leaving. Um, and then lastly, we have Hurricane, which is their big kind of coup de grace move. Uh, very similar in mindset uh, to the wind shot on the uh, Vartan there, which I still am kicking myself for not covering. But basically uh, serving that role of just a super move uh, that is going to be a little bit difficult to uh, pull off. But when you do, stuff's going to change. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get to it here. So we're going to go ahead and throw them into a fight here to ex to better explain what a lot of these things do. Uh, we're going to keep uh, Empower on uh, Gamp here uh, as a bit of an example uh, because we're also uh, going to go ahead and make sure that we have a particular thing active here. Uh, where we see uh, that uh, we have a uh, low uh, level class XP scaling fix activated. Um, because that's actually one of the other features of this uh, of this unit here. So it is recommended uh, to uh, to run Griffins with, um, or sorry, to always run the game with a low uh, 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 low class uh, uh, EXP scaling fix, uh, because it means that uh, the level curve doesn't really get messed up uh, since. The kind of the original game had this function where it like lower level units would get extra experience, um, but uh, unfortunately, as um, uh, as stuff creeps up, oftentimes you still have some units that end up kind of really really going beyond where they needed to be. Um, anyway, uh, so the thing is though. Um, is that uh, it uh, will dump all of the excess experience onto lower level units, meaning that not only are these guys potentially fantastic ambush predators, um, they're actually also going to be one of the best ways to uh, to power level a team. Uh, since oftentimes you're going to be running large groups of them, uh, instead of being punished like you would have uh, back in PSP here, uh, by having one class just suddenly uh, kind of outscale everybody else, and it gets really annoying as enemies start scaling up to those guys, um, in this case they're feeding that experience to other units. All right, so here's the thing. Normally they want to go for a lighter weight target, but in this case, this guy will do just fine. Um, they seem to, for whatever reason, have a somewhat uh, higher than average crit rate. I'm not sure if that's actually true or not, but they certainly feel that way. Um, but these guys are very good at uh, essentially picking on uh, picking on units one at a time. Uh, they are, again, remember, one of the fastest units in the game, um, so effectively what they can do is just surround somebody and just peck them away. I've personally found it really comfortable to run a team of four, um, but uh, effectively what this means is that you can have them all gang up on one guy, just effectively just devour them inside out, um, and then move on to the next one. So thankfully that uh, crit ended up rolling there, but anyway, now we have four units uh, that are going to be at relatively high health, uh, that happen to have a pretty high, uh, a pretty high TP considering, but I think we can improve that a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to pair them with a few different uh, beneficial things here. Um, so. Uh, one that I don't have in the team that I would definitely recommend uh, to pair these guys with is a Cleric, um, more so than a Beast Tamer in a lot of cases, because Bravery um, actually does the job of both of the things that you're going to see here today. Um, where uh, we've got Empower Beast, sure, but we've also, uh, for example, got access to uh, uh, to things like uh, Bravery there, which will give them 25 TP and Fortify. Fortify covers their uh, their lack of physical defense in a lot of situations, um, and additionally uh, gives them 25 TP, which is enough to immediately activate a lot of their moves. Um, anyway, so what we're going to do with Gamp here, as uh, we're going to actually go ahead and uh, get, him, uh, get him hit, uh, so that we can build some TP. So there we go, he gets himself hit, we get our Empower, um, and we're going to go ahead and empower this guy. Um, and the reason that we gave a uh, MP Leaf over to uh, that uh, generic Paladin over there was to use Electrify. Now, realistically, you should be using something like a Valkyrie for this, uh, but uh, effectively what Electrify does is that it doubles TP. Um, so what we're doing is uh, we're taking a unit that already has roughly 50, and then we're essentially multiplying that uh, up to the point that it's going to give them, um, uh, essentially give them uh, 100, right? Um, so their turn's coming up relatively soon. They should be able to make up those last four TP by the time we get there. Um, so that's going to go ahead and uh, give them another 43 here. We'll see if it's enough to build them up. Um, but you can very quickly just kind of snowball these guys. So things like Electrify, uh, Charge over on the dark uh, side of things, um, it very quickly allows you to, uh, to potentially charge these guys' bars up to be something pretty darn devastating. Now, this is what I was mentioning earlier about their accuracy score being a little bit... Um, a little bit, uh, it, like, it doesn't exactly tell you the full story. Uh, they don't get access to uh, accuracy-boosting equipment outside of the Ring of Alacrity. So in this case, uh, what I have is a Ring of Finesse on there, so I realistically would probably switch this guy out for a uh, Ring of Alacrity uh, later on. Uh, but this is just what they came with. Again, I kind of just left them as they were. 
Um, and so, for example, uh, we can go ahead and uh, use their uh, Toxic Breath here to go and charm this guy. Uh, that's uh, Berta's uh, special thing, so we already have one under control here. Um, and additionally, uh, we can go ahead and try to put this guy to sleep here. Uh, with uh, Avda's uh, Sacred Breath. Um, this guy, though, with his uh, high evasion, might be a little bit of a problem. Okay, so this guy, unfortunately, did not get up to his uh, 100, so we're probably just going to have him pass his turn. Um, but, uh, yeah, generally, a Ring of Alacrity. Um, so, like, I, I left them all with the different things here. Um, but, so, like, a, a Ring of Alacrity is definitely going to be uh, one of those things that you want to try and keep on hand uh, for the ones that you really want to land their hits. Uh, so this one's going to go this way. But for the sake of an idea, if you were to, let's say, kind of fully commit to this whole thing, a Talon dive from this guy now does 288 to this Archer, uh, now does 243 to this Cleric, uh, you know, 277 to this Wizard, uh, to this uh, Warrior, it would be about a 233. So if empowered, these guys can potentially two-shot uh, mid and uh, most uh, mid to lightweight units um, and be a legitimate threat to heavyweight units at the same time with uh, something like Talon dive. Um, something like Bloodbath uh, is pretty regularly going to be able to to, uh, cause them to survive an extra hit or two. Um, so just uh, again, keep this uh, keep this stuff in mind in terms of uh, how like how heavy hitting they can potentially be. Um, at any time, they still have their basic attacks, and interestingly enough, their skills and their basic attacks seem to make different uses of different uh, uh, kind of evasion formulas, as it were. Um, so it, so there are going to be cases where, for example, their skills can't hit, but their basic attacks can. Uh, so bear that in mind. Uh, they do have a little bit of a mode switch there. Um, and additionally, uh, it's worth noting that uh, as far as their uh, debuff resistance goes, uh, there's not many things that they necessarily get bullied by that much. Um, but one thing that is definitely worth uh, considering is... Um, uh, is actually uh, going to be uh, uh, when it comes to bind. Uh, so bind and leaden. Uh, Feather step actually gets rid of both of them for them, uh, so, while also actually increasing their movement range. Uh, so like Feather step gets rid of lead bind. Uh, bind. Uh, bind. Why am I having an issue with that? Um, and uh, will increase their movement range. So I'm not going to use it here. I'm going to use a turn reset. But just to give you an idea, uh, their essentially their maximum movement looks like this. They are crazy fast moving. And in fact, this is one of those funny uh, occasions where the game actually has to stop and think for a second. Like, hey, how is that move legal? <laughs> so anyway, um, but we're, what we're actually going to do here is throw down a hurricane. Uh, so one thing I want to point out about these uh, hurricane moves um, is, is that uh, when it comes to their AoE, uh, this is effectively the equivalent of a high-end, uh, like, elemental uh, or a draconic spell, uh, or I guess even Apocrypha, uh, back in um, uh, back in the PSP version, um, or I guess in uh, Reborn as well. Uh, but bear in mind uh, just how rare that is in One Vision, uh, that a lot of the higher-end spells are, like, extreme late-game type of stuff. Um, in this case, uh, they've got access to this pretty much uh, by the time they hit level 20 there. Um, so this is potentially devastatingly powerful if put in at the right time. Um... So that's just another thing to bear in mind. It's kind of in some ways, like, not necessarily an upgrade, but it's an interesting side grade uh, to what we see out of the um, uh, octopus. So in the case of the octopus, uh, where they've got their uh, their poison rain, um, potentially incredibly powerful, it can also be empowered, um, but uh, we potentially see a situation where they might have an issue actually... Um, uh, actually landing that thing due to a lack of water. Um, and so in this particular situation, this means that they have, uh, that they're able to access it in a uh, kind of far more convenient manner. Um, so it might be just what you need. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, do that here. And you can see how quickly these guys' turns are coming up. Like, as long as you get that momentum going, as long as they survive those first couple rounds, these guys are oppressively powerful uh, at uh, just repeatedly stacking all these attacks over and over and over. Um, so they can absolutely clear maps. And the thing is, again, don't rely on just one. Like, one by itself, I mean, like I said earlier, they're basically, uh, they're the cat kind of, uh, cats of, <laughs> cats of the sky here. Um, that, uh, you know, one cat by itself, they're, they might potentially, uh, outfight one thing, you know, if they get the ambush off and stuff like that. Um, but realistically, if, uh, if there's a bunch, um, like, usually you don't see cats hunt in packs or whatnot, but, you know, think of the difference between a standard house cat and, like, a, a pride of lions or something. That's kind of the, the scale difference, uh, on play here. 
So yeah, they're really good, and personally, uh, they've been my favorite way to kind of power level new units. Uh, normally, you don't need to do this that much in One Vision. Uh, simply, uh, you know, usually you get access to classes a bit more kind of uh, kind of early. You don't necessarily always need to uh, to kind of get classes uh, leveled up in Chapter Four and stuff like that. Um, but in this particular case, uh, we happen to get these guys right at the same time as Gamp with his Headhunter class. Um, I want to get that leveled up. I have uh, some generic versions that I made of, uh, of like the Paladin and such uh, that I'm hoping to test out for the purpose of making videos and whatnot. Um, so... Uh, so to uh, to that particular end, I want to, you know, make sure that, uh, that, you know, they're getting a little bit of experience as well. So... Uh, bear in mind, normally, the, the uh, rate of experience here uh, would imply that if you went with one class by itself, uh, and you were using only that class, and they were all getting the full uh, full share of experience uh, for the entire party, um, they would end up uh, getting up to level 7 over the course of completing this map. Okay, so we'll go ahead and see what the comparison looks like. Uh, but uh, the way that the class XP scaling fix works is that if you have a class that's overleveled compared with everybody else, all of that stuff uh, goes and uh, trickles down to the other members of the team, and uh, so in this particular case it ended up sharing all of it, but uh, while most of that experience would have gone to the Griffin uh, originally, uh, it split it between all of the rest. Uh, so for example, the Paladin, Headhunter, and Buccaneer each ended up getting about uh, 241, uh, whereas the Griffin only ended up getting 33, despite there being four of them. Uh, so effectively this does give a huge amount more experience to everybody else. Uh, so seeing as I had two other quote-unquote underleveled classes, it split it between them as well, and I'm assuming because the Paladin did more fighting they got more of that experience, I don't actually know. Um, uh, not really full, uh, fully aware of everything that the cheat does, um, or uh, that the uh, kind of fix does, rather. Uh, but either way, it almost gave a full, uh, full level to a paladin there. Um, so. Either way, they're a very, very useful class, uh, very useful in large groups, and the thing that you saw earlier was essentially against uh, against some basic uh, generic nobodies here. There are cases uh, that these guys can really, really, really oppressively uh, keep stuff uh, locked down. Uh, so, for example, uh, when you're going and doing the, uh, the temples and such, uh, you need to go clear out all those forts, and those forts can be a problem, because all those enemies are high up, and if you just simply charge in, you're not necessarily uh, going to have much of a good time. Uh, they tend to be fairly evasive, they tend to have a lot of uh, support, um, and additionally, they tend to have a lot of uh, fire that can rain down. But now, let's, uh, let's go ahead and say we take advantage of the their speed. We know that they're going to be able to act at a moment's notice, right? Uh, we get some Electrify casters on there, we keep doubling up their uh, their scores, uh, as well as giving them Empowers. Now we have a case that they can, for example, go in with a Delirium Haze, a Holy War, and uh, two Hurricanes, and just clear out the entire top of that fort. They can go on a bombing run. <laughs> so, using a flight of... Um, and that's basically what I did uh, to actually clear out a lot of these forts here. Um, that's uh, it, it just turned out to be a lot easier to just prep these guys and just completely sweep with Griffins. Um, I did initially start off with a thing of uh, combining in uh, Cockatrices as well, but honestly the Griffins ended up doing the job just fine, because usually stuff was crippled enough that they could just use their ridiculous speed to start cleaning up past that. Um, so yeah, really, really fast units, uh, very, I mean, technically they're slightly slower uh, than uh, than the Cockatrices, which is kind of funny, um, but yeah, they're very, very fast, uh, They're especially if you happen to get something like the Void Ring on them, uh, when you're uh, when you're potentially uh, going into the late game there, um, we're potentially uh, talking about a case where they might go down to, uh, to the 60s there, so it's good stuff. Um, and additionally, it's worth pointing out that if you end up uh, doing, if you end up losing any of these guys to risky plays, remember that the skill transfer mechanic still exists in One Vision. So if one of them dies, uh, they can essentially just silver transfer all of these, uh, all of these uh, accumulated ranks uh, over to somebody else. So like this guy has been training anatomy for a good long while, and so let's say he gets randomly killed off uh, during one of these uh, uh, kind of raids here. Uh, if we go over to Farampa Wildwood, uh, we can just the very first map we'd be able to get any replacement. Griffin, um, and just transfer his skills over, and congratulations, we have a new uh, new Griffin. You know, previous Griffin's dead, long live the Griffin. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, not only are they really fast, not only are they potentially devastatingly powerful, um, they're really good at uh, overwhelming uh, enemy units, even by themselves, without the need of an empowering unit. Um, having an Electrify user on there, like, it's hard to find a better cell than for these guys, because simply put, they get attacked once, they counterattack, and they immediately can uh, go and uh, kind of uh, transfer that into a Hurricane, a Delirium Haze, any of that. Um, 
uh, or potentially just keep them uh, alive, keep themselves alive on things like bloodbath for a good long while, right? So, really worth uh, really worth your time. Give them a shot at some point. Don't overlook these amazing flappy birds. Okay, I gotta get going. Enjoy your fried chicken. I'll see you later. Bye.